take a shot in the dark. Nighttime photography can be fun. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back to <laughs> Photography After Hours. We are, of course, sponsored by PAC, the Photographer's Adventure Club, that does photo walks, meetings, seminars, networking, workshops, and photo trips all around the country and world. Gosh, that's a lot, Nick. How do they do it? I don't know. Magic. <laughs> Magic. Pixie Magic. dust. All right. <laughs> so we are here, and I want to introduce everyone. So we have Susie Sprague. And my name is Nick. So how are you guys doing? Good. Very well. Very well. Who, who took a drink out of this? <laughs> Bailey. Bailey. <laughs> Bailey! Blame the dog. <laughs> yeah. Tell you. All right. My so. pizza and then he knocked it back with a beer. <laughs> so we're talking about um, taking photography pictures at night and how it can be rewarding for you. So how is it rewarding for you? How's it rewarding for me? <laughs> that sounds serious. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking right. about having fun. Yeah. And I think that a lot of times we forget that our cameras work at night, not just during the daytime. We don't have to flood them with light. Um, we can do lots of fun and creative things in the dark. And how is this rewarding? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're missing the mark Again here. Again with the <laughs> rewarding. <laughs> So, um, so a couple of, a couple of different things we were talking about. You, you travel a lot and everything. And um, when you go out, do you go out and seek like different cityscapes, like the skylines and different things like that. And then the towns, you kind of you get to see it from up above right. as a pilot. Yeah. But then do you go out and shoot them and stuff too? Yeah, I do. Typically, the trips that I fly finish up uh, sometimes ten or eleven o'clock at night, and so it's a great time to go out and shoot because by then most of the traffic is dispersed, and you know you have the opportunity to get a lot of um, great pictures and basically with the high ISO cameras and uh, uh, the help of a tripod you can just get some some fun shots just something to kind of break up the monotony of uh, some of the stuff you do during the day mm -hmm. and it's a, a bit of a challenge because um, you can either do a single shot I mean most of the cameras are good enough now that a single shot tends to work pretty well but you can also um, you know bracket it uh, um, maybe two up and two down and put them together in whatever your favorite uh, uh, processing program is. And uh, uh, I, for example, did uh, a shot in Oklahoma City where you wouldn't think that that would be terribly uh, exciting. But mm -hmm. uh, you, you go to the uh, Oak City Memorial downtown and it was dark and it was raining and it was just me and the security guard. And so um, I got some great shots there in the rain. Nice. Um, that, and this is at one in the morning, so there is wow. no nobody. Yeah. yeah. And it, it you was... wouldn't have a chance of trying to get that during the day then. No. That's when we were up too in Chicago, too. We didn't, yeah. we didn't stay up that late, but because I had to speak in the morning at the yeah. conference, but I, that was my plan was I want to go to the bean, which is called <laughs> Cloud Gate. It's like this big jelly bean looking thing, yeah. huge jelly bean. And uh, it shoot at night because during the day there's 300 people around. I did a time lapse because I was like, There's no way I'm going to get all these people out of here. So I just did a time lapse of them all moving around and stuff. But one in the morning, there oh, might gosh. be 10 people and you could get three shots and then just take them out when they move and stuff, you know? Sure. Well, and another thing that I did is I was in Sacramento and uh, um, <clears throat> they had the Tower Bridge there. And so I'm out there. At one in the morning, we were just talking about railroad tracks, taking pictures of railroad tracks. Please don't stand on the railroad tracks because you're going to get flattened by a train. Don't be <laughs> stupid. So I decided to go out and be stupid because um, <laughs> what you can do at one in the morning that you can't during, do during the day is you can stand out in the middle of the road where the bridge is and you can take you know a bracketed shot and bring it back and it's it's just an amazing picture. And it's just because there are no traffic, no cars. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, the railroad track thing is not to get off in the weeds. It's like yeah. there's so many dangerous things people do to get pictures. And then that, you know, pops up on any photography board. And no matter whether they're live tracks or a museum, people just get beat up about it. It's, and it's, it's like it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it's a hot button. But you well, can lay in the middle of the street at Monument Valley and get that shot at the Forest <laughs> Gump Hill with cars going yeah. past you at 80. That's okay. <laughs> well, well, not uh, illegal, too, but yeah. that's okay. But if that was a railroad track, you're going to hell, you know, <laughs> on the, on the like, Hell Express. Yeah. Oh. So we are off topic. 
But well, back well, the on the topic side of note night on that, stuff. However, is that you know I was out there shooting and mm. I heard sirens. Mm. Oh, they were coming for the you. The police are coming. I thought, ah, busted. Somebody said, who's this idiot taking pictures in the middle of the street? So I quickly folded my tripod up with my camera and just started walking along the sidewalk, just you know, whistling a happy tune like nothing's going on. <laughs> police car comes up right next to me, and I thought, oh, what's this going to be like? I said, sir, yes, and they go. Yeah, somebody had reported a body floating in the river, and we're <gasps> wondering if you saw it. Oh, <laughs> my like, goodness. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't see anything. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's down that way. <laughs> and they were gone, and so I thought, okay, time to That's go back terrible. to the hotel. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So so other other subjects to shoot at night, since this is a nighttime thing um, that we shoot quite often, mm -hmm. we shoot them at an Albuquerque Balloon Festival, mm -hmm. Tempe Town Lake, um, all over, you know, I've shot them mm -hmm. in New York, there are fireworks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've been seeing some cool different trends with fireworks, but a, a big thing too is getting foreground. Yeah. Um, so many people just point straight up in the sky and shoot the fireworks, where you wanna get grounded and, um, you know, I noticed some of the pictures I liked in my earlier shooting of fireworks were like people in the front. So get silhouettes of people, the little kid pointing sure. up, stuff like that, mm -hmm. because now that makes it kind of fuse in. That it's not just, oh, yeah, you capture the fireworks. Yeah. You know, you can pretty much capture fireworks with the camera on automatic. Yeah. It's really not that hard. Get creative. Have fun. Yeah. Um, reflections. At Tempe Town yeah, Lake, we get the reflection in the water. I love that. Well, and to get the base of it, I found that um, for me, the sweet spot seemed to be somewhere between six and 10 seconds on bulb. I mean, you know, the fireworks are going to go up, but you want to get, like you say, you want to get the uh, the lake and you want to get the bridge and everything else mm -hmm. uh, such that you don't really have to pull up a lot from the shadows with a lot of noise. And it, mm -hmm. it seemed like uh, that worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the, well, what was, was Suzanne doing with her things? Focus pulling. So what you can do with fireworks that's fun is, uh, and you can do it a couple of different ways. So you uh, focus so that the actual burst is in focus. And then, as, you know, the point where it's going to burst is in focus. And then as it's bursting, you throw it out of focus or opposite. You figure out the point where it's in focus. And sometimes you need to mark it on your lens um, or just know by hand, essentially, what, how far on the dial, so to speak, to turn and rack your lens to put it into focus uh, as it trails out. And you get these beautiful shapes they look from like the fireworks. like flowers almost. Yeah, yeah, they can look like flowers. Um, it takes a little bit of practice, but there's more fun learning that. Just and something once, different when I yeah. saw them. I was like, that's pretty cool. And know? once you get your uh, fireworks kind of down pat a next not kind of natural thing to do is some light painting mm -hmm. so even just with a little pen light uh flashlight doing a long exposure and writing words in the air or outlining things or uh kind of using it like a brush to uh to illuminate parts of an object in the dark uh is I think an easy way to add some variety and have some fun and not even have to go anywhere with your camera. You can do it in your house. We I did mean, in the studio here. Yeah. We were here with, with John um, Juran and we were testing out different new techniques and stuff right in the studio, just turn mm -hmm. the lights off and you have a dark environment. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you can do it in your house or in a closet or... Light paint your dog. Just yeah, don't, set up don't your... Don't light, don't light paint your dog. <laughs> you can try. You can. <laughs> don't do it. Yes, no. do it. Don't. Do it. All right, you're the decider. He'll, 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 no, he'll, uh, he'll take a piece out of you. <laughs> so um, yeah. have you done... Um, he'll, he'll take that flashlight. And... <laughs> so as opposed to he'll laying... Moon in... over the mountain. <laughs> yeah. as, as opposed to laying in the street, have you done any street photography at night, like under like the lamps of like someone like with a saxophone under the lamp leaning against it, like in New Orleans or something like that? Um, I've tried it, but it seems like what you need is a little bit of supplemental flash because you need just a little bit of a puff of light into the person just, just to make it work because you're going to have to, you know, leave it open just a little bit to get the street scene. And okay. it just needs, you know, a little bit on the person. Unless you can get, like you say, some illumination. We actually did a shoot, I think, all of us uh, down in the Roosevelt District at the uh, art show. And um, mm -hmm. I did get a couple pictures, and there was... Uh, um, one woman I took a picture of, and she was just lit by this real dim light type of a light from a mm -hmm. trailer, and it worked out fantastic. 
Nice. Yeah, the uh, the new Canon camera that just came out this week is uh, 4 million ISO. Right. Ugh. <laughs> Four million dollars. Yeah, I, I can't even get my mind around that yeah, number. That's, right. yeah. that, that's good electric. though, because you know it's not gonna work at four million. I get it'll work, yeah. but it'll 25, be twenty five thousand ISO is way out of my range. I mean my yeah. playground and as far as ISO is concerned is like two thousand. It's just really not very high. Four thousand for just some star shots possibly. Yeah. But yeah, yeah but that's, that's what I'm saying. So it's not going to be great at four million, but if it's yeah. good at twenty five thousand, that would be good. That would twenty five thousand will get you any place you need to go. Yeah, if, yeah, you, if yeah, you could yeah. get a noise free image, which we're not really there yeah. yet. But yeah. uh, once they hit that, that's about all you need. Oh, another thing that you can I wanna, do. I want to document that and ask you in five years and be yeah, like, no, uh, <laughs> you know, it's this, you know, and uh, it's okay. You know, I'm old. I'll be dead. People in horses were like, I can't wait till we can put two horses on this carriage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that driver like Ferraris, like two horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking about things like that you could do where you don't have to go anywhere or have like super special equipment or anything like that really is just uh, headlights or tail lights of cars trailing by and you can do that on the corner of your street or you or know trains at high speed you get right in the middle of the track <laughs> <laughs> or if you yeah, live near sure. an airport um, planes taking off and landing and, and that kind of stuff, it, it can be pretty cool looking. It looks cool trippy. Looking. Um, Andrew did Especially that, right? Especially because the and flashing like, lights. Yeah, and it, the, kind yeah. of a time-lapse type of a thing that he put together in Photoshop, I think, didn't he? Um, no, I've seen that too, but the, the nighttime ones, you just see like dash dot, dash dot. It's like kind of mm -hmm. like, um, like Morris code of all the planes coming up, but he did long exposure of a bunch of planes. So there's all these different trails of the trajectories yeah, of every the which way they're coming lights, in. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool different because you know, like you never think like to take a picture of that yeah well no you guys also did some special effects you guys were just out of a shoot at the uh, elvis church was it last night and yeah yeah mm -hmm. did some light painting and then mm -hmm. something else incendiary as i recall incendiary yeah we almost burnt the place down <laughs> no. yeah so we um <laughs> so no. we we get permission to go on private property to do stuff like this and mm -hmm. um what we do is um, we'll do steel wool um, and you want to do it in a totally safe place. And um, we wear all goggles, gloves, cotton hat. clothes, hat, because hey, mm -hmm. everything's flammable. You know, if we if we learned anything from Michael Jackson besides that Pepsi is better than Coke, it's that his hair goes on fire, you know. <laughs> so, do that, you know. <laughs> so, you know, you, you basically, you know, um, we've we learned the moonwalk, too. So we've learned three things from him. Yeah. I don't moonwalk while spinning steel wool, though. Yeah. No. So you 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 build a contraption to put the steel wool in, and you mm -hmm. can actually light it up and spin it, and it has this cast off, and it looks like a pinwheel, basically, like a firework pinwheel. Mm -hmm. um, now it can be considered a firework in many states and cities. Mm -hmm. so that's why you want to do it on private property and do it in a big parking lot with nothing flammable around, because that actually sets off like molten steel and shoots it out and you don't, you don't want to mm -hmm. have anyone near you so photographers should be like 20 yards away if not more yeah. so that you know it's not hitting them it's not hitting a model it's have not hitting everybody you. and anything flammable clear of the entire radius yeah so yeah. and then we bring out fire extinguishers yeah. and we're you know we have someone spotting that person mm -hmm. because again you know you know it's very easy for an accident to happen so yeah. but you we don't can recommend do the same it. kind of thing with all kinds of with LED lights and um, they're harder to light on fire, but you know, after a lot yeah. of gasoline, you, you can, can really can. get. The but even glow sticks, sensational once they get going. You can even put glow sticks on the end yeah. of you know the toy of string or and spin them. Yeah, and spin those around and make all kinds of shapes and stuff. I mean, the the kids' toy department with all the flashing lightsabers and stuff like that is just a treasure trove of light painting you know, possibilities. Definitely. So all Definitely. kinds of fun stuff to do there. Well, and you guys were light painting the buildings while you were doing that too. So you yeah. were kind of getting yep. the full effect. Foreground, midground, background. So, mm -hmm. you know, building a scene. So we start off with a building, lighting the building up and then get everyone to get that exposure correct. And then we, you know, built up, you know, there's a mountain behind the, the building and then we put someone in front spinning something or lighting, light painting something. You can use flashes, you know, you can get really creative with, with light painting, doing all different kinds of stuff. 
So, yeah. and, and, it, and it makes for, you know what it is, everyone's at a different angle. Everyone has a different um, settings. If, you know, we give people mm -hmm. starting settings, but they change them and everyone's got a different zoom mm -hmm. length. And so everyone's pictures are totally different of how they framed yeah. it out and what they're getting. And then you could play around with the colors in Photoshop later and change yeah. the colors on the, the lights and everything. What always uh, surprises me, I guess, and it's not that it's really a surprise. It's just, I am always... Um, I, I like to do the long exposures when it's complete darkness and I don't know what I'm going to get until I get to see the preview on the back of my um, display. And oh, last, last night was funny. You could hear everyone, ooh, yeah. the first couple of shots, everyone's like, oh. <laughs> and that wasn't even with steel wool. That was just with light painting. And they're like, yeah. oh. Even just taking a long exposure at a pretty high ISO, of what you think is complete blackness, like a completely black landscape and do, you know, a, a 20 or 30 second exposure at like 5,000 ISO mm -hmm. and it looks like daylight. And mm -hmm. I just love that whole concept of your lens is gathering light even when your eyes don't it doesn't seem like your eyes are gathering light. Well, then then you could combine stuff too. So we went up to, we just did a workshop up in Arches and we brought the LED lights up there and we lit up the delicate arch. We hiked out there, we lit that up, but we were really going for the Milky Way. So we were mm -hmm. exposed for the Milky Way, the stars, and then we're lighting up the arch. So, cause it's pitch black, you can't see it. So mm -hmm. that popped up and then you have the you know the milky way above perfectly exposed and you have this great landscape in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and it's sort of foreground <laughs> it was a little distance away at least in my shot yeah um, but even in doing star photography you can find ways to work in a foreground element and that's a good example and ground it you, you just don't want to have just the milky way just the moon just the sun you know you want to ground it yeah. and add it to your you know your that's your background as the stars yeah. at that point so you know you want yeah. to kind of make it interesting well and then another one of your favorite things to shoot at night is lightning oh yeah me you, you love lightning. <laughs> Yeah, you're out there getting electrocuted rather than standing <laughs> on trains. And... Yeah, lightning is <laughs> it's it's a fun. Lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know you have to uh, be really safe with that. You know, um, we just had our speaker talking about that, and uh, that's the biggest thing is safety. Too many people put themselves in harm's way, and mm -hmm. um, you know bad things can happen. So you, I like to shoot from outside of the storm, shooting in when mm -hmm. it's either coming towards me. Um, usually, when it's going away, it's not so great, but. You know, just from a safety standpoint, I don't want to feel all nervous that I'm going to ruin my camera or get my camera wet yeah, or knocked use over. Common sense. You know, get hit by lightning. Sure. Yeah, I've had it hit a few times too close to me, and it's just like I'm done. You know, I'm, I right. leave. I'm not going to just sit there and, you know, have lightning hitting all around me. I've, yeah. I've seen it like light a tree or a saguaro up um, on fire. Like that's how close it was. It was like, okay, time to go. Right. <laughs> you know, and it's loud too. It's like a bomb went off next to me, you know. Sure. Well, and you yeah. can look at storms from even 25 miles out or still, you know, oh, yeah. fill your frame and you're still a safe sure. distance from Use a here. long lens. Uh, lightning is plenty bright. You mm. don't have to shoot it at 2.8. It doesn't have to be that low. If you're, um, you know, if your lowest f-stop is is 3.5 or 4 you know 4.0 you're still good mm. and uh again iso is your friend in <laughs> so in it's not your friend things. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well right. in lightning photography um i, I don't think you I don't even high. need it yeah you don't even need it that high because it's so bright lightning is so so bright but it is fun. It's fun to shoot a storm from far away. And when we only see that with our eyes for just a split second, but if you can capture it in a frame and then see just how beautiful a lightning bolt is and how it just goes in every direction and, and wider usually than you thought it did when you saw it. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's very cool. So yeah. get out and shoot at night. Um, we have to out here. We live in a desert, so mm -hmm. it's 107 right now at night. <laughs> So yeah. um, during the day is kind of off limits for most people. So get out and shoot and, and take some pictures and uh, Don't be afraid of the dark. Yeah, photography like everything is just best when done in the dark. Just watch out <laughs> for the clowns.
Not trap for the clowns. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. All right. Cheers. So subscribe to our channel and leave us comments of other ideas you have for at night. And see you next time.